Hey, RJ, hope you're well, man. Um, you didn't get a lot of playing time early in Big Ten play, but then Coach Underwood's kind of, you know, put you in some big spots against Northwestern and Purdue. What's that been like for you, and, and how do you kind of handle going in somewhat cold in those kind of big moments? Uh, it's been kind of a long process, just working out. Um, been grinding, like, every time a game finish or I didn't have, a lot, um, like, a lot of playing time, I'd just go to the gym, work out. Work on myself, work on my body, because it's like the major issue on me, like my body. Because like you see every college athlete, I have like a grown man body, and like I'm a little slower to build up my muscle and stuff. So it's just most of that, like my body is not probably the college type, but just had to keep working, um, get a little bit stronger, um, and just get ready every day in practice. What's your mindset when coach puts you on Jaden Ivey at, at Purdue? And, and what's that mean to you that Coach Underwood gives you that assignment as a freshman? So for me, it means a lot because in my point of view, I think he's giving me the confidence to guard the best player on the other team. So he, he has a lot of confidence in me right now. And it just if it, it feels good on my way because if he gives me that confidence, it means that like he's trusting me to play in, in those type of games. Thanks, RJ. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Good morning, RJ. I kind of wanted to ask you about maybe how difficult it was for you to come in and not play as much as you probably expected to or maybe wanted to coming into your freshman year because obviously growing up, like you're one of the better players on every team. So to grow from being one of the better players to not always getting the minutes, how difficult was that for you? I mean, it was difficult because, um, you know, um, the type of player you are, but it's just you got to um, get used to the team and not play for you. Like, first of all, just play for the team. Like, we're playing to get a national championship. So it's just um, do what your job what your job is. Make it, like, the best as you can. If you get two minutes, like, go as hard as you can and take the best out of all the minutes, like, the coach gives you. And what do you think you learned the most from the time when you weren't playing compared to now or you're kind of starting to get into the rotation a little bit more? Um, so I just basically, like, whenever I'm not on the court, I just be, like, um, basically scouting, like, the offense and defense, like, how they move in case it's, I got that, that little gap of time. Like, I know some weaknesses that I've seen, like, in the game, and it's just, like, very visual. Hey, good morning, RJ. Uh, Coach Underwood, I'm just wondering, what do you think you did to work yourself into this rotation? Um, so basically just stay with it, not quit, and keep my mentality up. So basically just stay with the coaches, work out every day, extra 30 minutes, wait, um, lift, 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 the extra stuff, and just um, not keeping a, ne a negative mindset that would affect the team. Just keep being positive and keep playing. I mean, what's it like for you, right? I mean, you know what you put in outside of the screens, I guess, for people to see? What's it like to see that start to pay off in, in big games, especially? I mean, it feels good. It's just um, whenever you see hard work, like paying off, you just want to get more and more and more, so you just keep working hard. Thanks, RJ. Appreciate it, man. Sir. Hey, RJ. It kind of seems like you, Luke, and Brandon have each kind of had moments this season where you've been able to play big roles off the bench, but that's kind of been a little fleeting and fluctuating. How much do you kind of lean on them? And do you guys kind of lean on each other during that kind of process where your minutes are kind of up in the air? So we just support each other. Like after each game, we just talk like in a room, like what are we guys on a game that could have helped us like win or loss? Um, but we always support each other. Like if you had a good game, like we're really proud of like each, each one of us. So it's just, having each one for us, like right there, whenever we have a good moment or a bad moment, just be there for each one of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know you guys are kind of in the middle of the season, but do you guys kind of think of your roles and I guess the impact you guys can have kind of in later years, since I know you guys are kind of in scout too and also kind of looking towards the future? I definitely, we'd be, we'd be talking about that um, a lot of times. We just got to be day by day and just wait for that time to come. Thanks. RJ, this, this was a pretty tight game uh, up in Evanston. Um, what are some challenges uh, playing Northwestern? And, uh, you know, what are some keys of the game for you guys? 
Um, so they're really a team that is really together on defense. So like they're a great team. Um, they've been playing really good um, recently. So they just do our job, what we do at home and road kills. So we just do our job and execute. You had a pretty good game against them last time. Uh, um, what was the key to that for you? And is there something particular about Northwestern that makes you a good fit uh, for the rotation? Um, it's just coming from the bench and playing hard. That's just mostly about it. Just knowing where to be, um, what to do, and not trying to do like extra stuff that would affect the team. Thanks, RJ. RJ, what have you learned from DeMonte, Jake, you know, some of the veterans on this team that, that are seniors that, that you think you can build on in the future? I really think I've, like, gained a lot of confidence from them because, like, being able to guard them in practice with all the the time they have been in the Big Ten, being able to guard them, like, they know how it works. It just gave me a little boost of confidence, like, in the game, if they've been a fifth-year senior, um, it's going to be, like, almost the same. So it's just I, I put up that chance for even Trent and Bella. Sometimes I get on and guard them to, like, get ready for those next years and just take the best out of them this year. And then Coach Underwood said the other day, RJ is going to be a star. Um, what's that mean to you to hear that? Um, I just keep with the process. Like, I don't get ahead of nothing or get something in my mind that will, like, make me feel different. So I just keep working. I like the word, like, talk by itself. Thanks, man. Hey, RJ. Um, you guys have been rolling pretty good there. Uh, just what was the – what's been the response maybe to the loss of Purdue? How have you guys kind of, you know, maybe you know, handled that in the last few days of practice? Um, we're just going to handle it on to the next one. Just go to the next game and keep on going. There's a, a good amount of um, time left for the season, so it's just keep going to the next game. Yeah, after that game, uh, Trent said a couple times that there was maybe a lot to learn from the loss at Purdue, just what what did you think maybe you guys could take from that game? Um, so just simple mistakes that we could have um, evaded. So just those type of stuff that we practice every day, we made those mistakes in the game. It just cost us. So Thank you. Hey, RJ. Uh... Obviously, you know, you're getting a little bit more playing time. Have Coach talked to you about putting you on the court a little bit more to finish the season? Have you guys had that conversation? If so, what has that been like? Um, so he's been um, in practice. The coach has been telling me that, like, I've been doing a good job. But for me, it's just um, not enough because i got to keep working, keep working, keep proving myself. So it's just um, I'm working hard for it. So it's – if it's paying off, like, it's great. If it's not, I just got to keep working and wait till the opportunity comes, like, at Northwestern and just take advantage of it. All right, Jason, the older, go ahead, sorry, Ken. Just quick follow. Has the older players kind of helped you out and some of the younger freshmen since you guys weren't playing early? I mean, what have the veterans been like as far as helping you guys, you know, understand, you know, you know that your time is clean? Can you hear that? Can you repeat that, please? I didn't hear you well. Yeah, can you – what has the older players been like? Have they helped you guys out, the freshmen, you know, since you haven't been playing a lot early on? I mean, have the veterans talked you through that and helped keep you guys going? Oh, definitely. Um, they are a great piece on what we on what the freshmen are doing right now. They've helped us a lot. Like, they push us to the max level every day and just – trying to make us better so we can get ready for this next couple of years and hold the culture of the team. Thank you. Appreciate it. RJ, you seem to be really big on just kind of like trusting the process and continuing to work. Where does that mindset kind of come from? Um, it's just motivation since I was a kid, like know where I come from. And at this point, it's like no way of quitting. So you just got to keep going and keep grinding until I get what I want. Why is it that where you come from, being from Puerto Rico or wherever you're speaking from, has allowed you to kind of have this mindset of not quitting and just continuing to work? 
Um, this like it usually comes for a lot of sacrifices for my family. Like after all they like done for me, um, like I feel like I gotta pay him back. So it's just a lot of hard work I need to do. Hey, RJ, on a veteran team, I mean, you obviously, when you got on campus, you kind of saw the age of everybody. What was the thing that you were like, I've got to do this to get on the floor? Um, I mean, usually when I came here, I just didn't like, whenever practice does, I got to go like whoever's in my position on veterans, like to prove that like, I, I, I can be at the same level as them, even though like they, they got more like, more experience on it. It's gonna be way different in games, but like, I would uh, challenge myself against them and like keep getting better. Is that uh, tough? I guess. I mean, just because you've been asked earlier, like you've probably been the star on every team to have to find a different path, I guess, and, and prove yourself. I mean, was that a challenge early on? Excuse me. You said what? Like, just because you've been a star, I'm, I'm guessing on every team you had been on, was it tough to have to kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit and prove yourself over again for the first time in, I would guess, a few years? I mean, I knew that I was not going to be, like, the star once I came here because, like, Bell already came for the sophomore year as a big player here. So I just knew I was going to come here to do a role, like, had to do my role. So I was not worried about that. I was just focused on, like, what can I do to earn those minutes? My last thing is it's sold out tomorrow. Obviously, it's it's been pretty good environments. What have you learned about just college basketball environments this year? I've um, just learned that the Atlanta fans are crazy. It's just they'll be anywhere, anywhere you go in the Big Ten, they'll be in there. So it's just really a lot of love for them, and they do be packing the house. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Hey, RJ, I, I see on social media that people are have, have been clamoring to see you and they really enjoy it when you come in. Um, I wonder if you're having fun. Are you? Is this more work this first year or are you having a great time? Definitely have a great time, especially with the veterans. It's just amazing how they can help you throughout this process and it's enjoying the process. You can um, feel like frustrated or something like that, because if your team's winning and you're frustrated, you're doing something wrong, because, like, you're holding the team down instead of, like, pushing it to succeed. Thanks, man. Sure. Okay, RJ, that's all we've got for you. Appreciate your time this morning. All right, appreciate it. Stand by for Coach. Okay, we're back. My audio good? Everything great? All right, I'm going to let uh, Coach start off with a statement and then uh, we'll take your questions. Good morning. Uh, yeah, just um, kind of a kind of a different week. I think we had a we had a mandatory NCA two days off um, after the Purdue game. So uh, we'd been running pretty hard, fast and furious there. Uh, and obviously with the reschedule of the Purdue game, uh, you know, the going back to the, you know, touch on Purdue, um, got pretty good looks, didn't make shots. And, uh, you know, in a, in a game where, uh, where they did, uh, you know, you have to try to match them. And, um, you know, obviously Ivy was, was outstanding, but it was, it was the, uh, uh, you know, it was a lot of the other guys, uh, that, 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 you know, Gillis made a couple of really hard shots and, and, um, you know, we, we, we weren't good enough on the defensive end, uh, for sustained periods of time that, that hurt us. But, uh, again, I thought we, we did some good things offensively. I thought we got the ball where we needed to, we got great shots. Um, you know, DeMonte, Jacob, uh, you know, Trent all got good looks, um, you know, Plummer made some hard shots, uh, but, 
again, I thought, uh, you know, Kofi's presence was, was definitely a force. He was tremendous offensively. Uh, but, um, you know, the crazy thing about it is two nights later, they don't make any. So, um, you, um, you know, you move on and we've got a couple of days off, came back yesterday and practiced and, and, uh, we get a Northwestern team that's playing great. Uh, they've, they've, they've changed a little bit since we played them last, uh, they're, they're letting it fly from three, um, you know, 31 threes, I think a game here and in, in the, in the last few, um, and, uh, obviously, you know, smack Nebraska at Nebraska, uh, had them down close to 30. Um, but, uh, Bowie and, and Adij, uh, Barons, uh, have all been, uh, just letting it fly and, and they're playing a little faster. There, there's a lot more ball screening in, uh, in their offense, uh, than, than maybe we've seen, but a team that, um, again, we know is very talented. Nance hurt us in the first game. Um, and, um, you know, is a very talented player and, uh, Again, a team that's, uh, that's that's playing awfully well. Coach, this was a difficult game up in Evanston. You had to make a run at the end there to, to pull it out. What, what are some challenges? Um, you mentioned some of them. What are some other challenges this team presents for you matchup-wise? Well, you know, I think the one thing that, you know, they can they can, um, they can can play really big, you know, if they play young and Nance. Uh, they, can, they can play smaller if they want to. Uh, Williams kid off the bench, dance at the five, give you a lot of pick and pops. Uh, they're setting a lot of what we call one, four ball screens uh, with certain lineups, um, you know, trying to create switches for, for Bowie. Uh, but they've got ball screen action a lot more. They're playing with a lot more tempo, uh, a lot faster. Um, you know, that's, that's a good thing for us. Um, but um, again, it's, um, you know, this is, a, this is a good basketball team, and, and they've been making shots at a high clip. I think 12 of their first 14 shots against Nebraska were threes. So it's, uh, it's a team that um, is, 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 uh, is shooting the ball and, and, and feeling pretty – they've got a lot of freedom at, that, at, at the three-point line right now. I want to ask about rebounding, Coach. It seems like it, you're a really good rebounding team for most of the season, but it's tapered off a little bit lately. Uh, What's the reason for that, you think? And has it been a point of emphasis in practice? It's been a point of emphasis um, a, a lot lately. And, and again, what we see is uh, some different lineups. Um, you know, Jake guards most teams' fours, DeMonte as well. Uh, they're undersized, so they've got to block out. And, and so those guys don't go get rebounds above, you know, where, they, where they've got to jump. Uh, they're, they're more concerned with blocking out. Uh, our guards have not been rebounding. You know, we haven't gotten rebounds from Trent and Plummer uh, at a very consistent level. Um, and, and that's, we've got to get, those guys got to get long rebounds. And then everybody just runs their whole team at Kofi. You know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things that uh, uh, we've got to be dialed into. Uh, we're, it, it's, a, it's a point of emphasis. Um, and it's, it's something that uh, on both ends of the court. And we've got to find ways to get easy baskets on the offensive end. We've got to get guys going back. We've got to, you know, uh, you know we've got to, get, we've got to get back to the physicality of the game. And that's, that's one of the things that uh, uh, we've got to get better at. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Brad. Trent had a pretty noticeable limp post-game after leaving earlier in the game. Do you expect him to go tomorrow? Two days off, he's been good. That helped him. And do you like, will there be a restriction or is he all the way good to go? Do you think? He'll be good to go. Thank you. Good morning, Brad. I kind of wanted to ask about RJ. He seems to be this guy who just really trusts the process. And he said a lot of it has to do with where he comes from and his family and kind of wanting to prove them that he's good enough or whatever. Um, as a kid, you speak really highly of him. What is it about RJ that's really impressive to you? Yeah, I mean his upbringing. I mean he's he's been brought up the 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 right way, and and you know he stands for everything that's good, uh, and you know he's not afraid of uh, of of 
the process. He's not afraid to put in the time. He's not afraid to, to grow. I think he's, uh, he's trusting that more. He's understanding that more. He's cerebral that way. Uh, you know, a lot of kids want to fight the process and, uh, he doesn't, he he's, he's, he's grown to accept that and, and to understand that, you know, in practice, he may only get three shots, but you got to come to the gym extra and work. And you got to get a second workout with Fletch and uh, you've got to stay primed and stay ready and, and know that all that work is going to pay off in the long run. And, and he's, he's smart that way. He understands it. He hasn't got impatient. Um, you know, he's added close to 20 pounds since he's been here in the summer. Uh, you know, that body's changing and, and his athleticism's and enha- being enhanced. So, you know, I think he's, he sees the growth and, uh, you put that with his IQ and his, his natural instincts and his feel. And it's why I'm really confident that young man's going to be a star in this league. And then to follow up, what is it about his game that makes you feel like he's going to be a star? Because that's the second or third time that you've said that now in the last couple of weeks. Shoots it, passes it, dribbles it, runs, athletic, plays above the rim. He's got great length, guards it. Um, his IQ, his feel, um, you know he's got the ability to go break plays off and get a and get a basket. Uh, he, he's an instinctive rebounder. Uh, he, he's he's an instinctive cutter. Uh, there's there's uh, a lot of positives to work with from from that aspect. And it's just you know physically just matching up and getting stronger. Brett, I want to follow up on RJ. You put him in some big spots against Northwestern and Purdue, including guarding Jaden Ivey, uh, maybe the best guard in the country, when he hadn't played that much in Big Ten play um, through the first, what, nine games. Was that kind of a sink or swim test for you, or, or what did you see during sure. practice to, to kind of you know put him in that spot? Well, no, he, he's, he, he guards well in practice. And, you know, okay – Go guard somebody else that's really, really good and, and, and find your way. You know, he's still a little handsy, you know, in terms of, you know, not guarding with his chest. And, and that, that comes with physicality in the weight room. But, um, you know, his instincts are great. He's got, he's, he's got a, he doesn't take a false first step with his slide. He's, you know, he's a guy that um, uh, has length to contest jump shots. Uh, the physicality of getting over screens. Uh, you know, he continues to get better at and fight at and, and, um, but he's, um, he's, he's got all the tools to be excellent. He did a good job on, he did a good job on Ivy. He, he, he fouled him a couple of times. He didn't have to, but, um, he'll grow with that. What can he mean to you, Brad? Um, I know what you think about for the long term, but what can he mean for your team the a rest lot. of the way? A lot, a lot. He's, he's a live body. He's energy. He's a guy that, um, you know, we can pitch ahead to and go finish. Uh, you know, you saw him catch a ball on the wing and just uh, reject a screen and, and hit a pull-up jump shot. Uh, that was elite. Uh, his rebounding is elite. You know, he gets his rebound. I mean, his head's at the rim. Um, you know, he's, he's just a guy that, that gives us a shot of athleticism, gives us a shot of energy and, and playmaking. Thanks, Brad. And then, Brad, to kind of follow that, I know Luke and Brandon have each kind of gotten their own stints too. Having all these freshmen kind of play these minutes early, how much does that kind of maybe extend your rotation or ability to extend your rotation later in the season? Yeah, I I, I hope so. You know, I think you start getting into uh, this time of year. I think that, that you know, I, it, it's trust for me. Um, you know, I, and I trust all three of those guys. You know, and Brandon yesterday had maybe his best day of practice ever. Um, you know, and he was running on the scout team. Uh, you know, you start to see, uh, you know, Luke's development and making shots and his physicality. And now RJ, and, and, and that gives you confidence as a coach, not, not for next year or the years to come, but for the postseason. And you're not afraid to play those guys. And, and if that can help Jake and, and, and DeMonte and Coleman, and it can help those guys and, and, Re, re, replace I don't say replace but uh, we don't lose ground going to those guys 
and it gives those guys a chance to recover and, and be stay fresher. Absolutely. That's a plus for us. And then I guess I know for those kind of three, them getting minutes, how much, how important are they kind of the future of the program with a lot of wings and kind of guys leaving after this year? They're huge. It's, that's why you bring them in and, and you, you, you don't, they're culture guys, they're process guys, they're guys that work, they're guys that fit. And, you know, they're going to be guys that, that, that have a chance to elevate their games to, um, to, to really high levels. And they're all different and they all do something that is, um, uh, it has a chance to be elite at this league to allow them to be successful. So yeah, we're, I'm, I'm really excited about those three. Thanks. Hey coach, we saw Curbelo get extended and run against Purdue. How do you feel his chemistry is coming along with the other guys, whether it be on the court or in practice and just not having a lot of prep time being out and then coming back? Better. It's better. Um, you know, that's that's like I think one of the challenges of like having to take two days off is um, we don't, you know, we go back into prep mode, um, you know, so you don't get it's, 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 it's hard this time of year guys. Cause you don't, you know, and we're dealing with COVID and rescheduling, you don't get a lot of practice time and, you, and, and this team needs that. Uh, but I think the one thing that, that we're understanding is Bello can get one anytime he wants pretty much. And he can get in the paint anytime he wants. And it's, um, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's shooting the ball, you know, from three. Well, he's, uh, and it, it's, it's, trying to, you know, find the balance with he and, you know, who's, who's on the ball matchup wise. And, and that, that's probably more of our, uh, our challenge right now. Um, and, uh, you know, the other night Plummer got going. So you want Plummer on the floor, you want Trent because of his, his defensive, uh, you know, prowess. And, and so it's, it's um, yet, and yet Bello was, you know, 15 points and, 20 minutes or 21 minutes, whatever it was, he's, and uh, he plays with a speed and a pace that, that, that we like. So we're continuing to work on it. Um, you know, I think he's, he's, he gives us a lot from the rebounding standpoint as well, because he's a great rebounder. Uh, but uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. What do you think the adjustment is for other guys when he's in there? I know Lash talked about Bigs expecting passes from different angles for, for other on the wing, or is it maybe we run more when he's in the game? What's kind of the adjustment when he's on the floor? It's a game to game adjustment based on how people play us in ball screens. And, you know, I think one of the things that, that is, is different is he's always going to get in the paint. And, you know, sometimes you, you can be, a um, five seconds into a shot clock and he's in the paint and maybe nobody else has touched it. Sometimes, you know, you've got to, you've got to run offense and get it back to him knowing he's still going to get it in the paint where everybody else has got to look. Uh, you know, I think the, the biggest adjustment Derek is, is, is when we go with him and, and whether it's early in the offense, whether it's, you know, a late clock and everybody's touched it, he's always going to get a shot. And, and so it's, and, and have that capability, um, you know, so it's a matter of just when and where that, that comes more in the shot clock than, than anything else. His pace we need, I, I love, I love his pay, you know, the pitch aheads, the, the opportunities to get plumber shots in transition, Trent shots in transition, um, Kofi on a rim run, like he got the other night. We haven't had one of those in a while, um, you know, kick head to RJ. Uh, you know, Jacob Grandison, trail threes, you know, th that pace he plays with helps us. Um, but, you know, in the half court, it's, it's more of, you know, kind of a little bit of, of IO like, you know, tr figuring out where we're getting him the ball, how we're getting him the ball, even when he's off the ball. Um, and uh, so we're getting better at that. Thanks. Hey, Brad, Trent mentioned a couple times on Tuesday night after the game that just there'd be a lot to learn, maybe going back over the film from that one. Was there anything in particular you wanted the guys to take away from, from Tuesday? Yeah, we made a lot of scouting report mistakes. Our whole goal going into that game was not 
uh, not trying to give them threes. And, you know, we made a couple of strong side corner mistakes that we got, gave them two threes. Um, you know, uh, Plum lost a guy on an offensive rebound. We told him that they kicked to the corners and we worked on it. Um, you know, and he, we stand and watch and we give up a three. Those are scouting report mistakes. Um, you know, I think there's a, there's, there's some lessons to be learned in, in how to guard Ivy in a, in a ball screen. Um, you know, you, uh, I, I compare it a lot to Luca the other night goes for 51. The Clippers switched it, put a five man on him. And after getting six threes dotted in their eye, they, they had to change. Uh, we probably got to do that a little bit more. And, um, you know, you get an exceptional talent like that. You, you, you've got to show him multiple looks. And, and uh, so I think there's some things that we can grow from in, in that game. But uh, we made too many self-inflicted mistakes. We ran really good offense. We got really good shots and didn't make them. But you can't give them nine threes. I guess with the, on the getting good shots and not making them front, like this team has shown an ability to figure out a way even when maybe the shots aren't falling. What's, what's a foundational piece to that? What makes a team good at maybe switching gears when that's not working? Yeah, and again, you know, I, I think Purdue had a lot more to do with that. You know, you're talking about the number one offensive efficiency team in the history of college basketball right now. And, and Purdue stresses you with that. You know, that you've got, a, you've got a, an elite pro talent. You've got legit size and two guys, and especially Edie. And then you surround him with 40% three-point shooters. They stress you on that end, and you can't make mistakes. And nights that you don't make shots, you kind of feel that building up, you know, like, yeah, you know. Um, and we weren't good enough on the defensive end stopping them. They played great. They played, they played terrific. And, you know, both nights they've played us, they've been very good. And the next games they've lost, you know. Um, so it's, it's um, you know, we get, we got to be better, but they just put, they put a lot of, they're a good basketball team. They put a lot of stress on us and they made shots. Thanks, Brad. Coach, I want to ask you a little bit more about Pete Nance. Uh, uh, what is it about him that's a matchup challenge for you? I know you're not going to tell me who's guarding him tomorrow, but um, does his length give you a little bit of trouble? He's a he's a, he's he's a very very skilled player. He's very athletic. He's got great bounce. Uh, he can he can deck it. Um, you know he he can shoot the three, um, it, and he's a he's a matchup nightmare. And you know that's why that that young guy is going to have a chance at the next level. Um, but um, you know he's he's a guy that can play in the mid post. He can play with his back to it. He's got a running sky hook. He's got a three point. I mean, he's got a pretty full bag of of, of tricks to go to. And um, you know you've got to make him not just a player on the offensive end. You've got to make him play on the defensive end as well and and and, and guard. But uh, um, yeah, he, his versatility is his biggest strength. Uh, one more quick one, if I could. It's this game sold out. We got an email yesterday. It's told everybody the game is sold out. What is what does that crowd coming back home do for you? Does it give you a little extra lift? Absolutely, one hundred percent. And after being at Purdue the other night, um, you know, we we that that's a it's it was a huge lift for them. It was deafening in West Lafayette the other night. It's I don't know if I've been in a place that was. Uh, maybe since Allen Fieldhouse and Bramlage Coliseum back in the day that was as, as, as loud as that place was the other night. And uh, uh, our crowd is, is a big, big part of, of our success at home. And it's, it's something that uh, uh, makes this place special. And uh, you know, when you come off one like that on the road where you saw the impact of, of, of the crowd and the noise and how hard it was to communicate and talk, we've, we've, we look forward to that. Brad, you talked about freshmen and understanding the process. Um, when this day and age, I don't know how uh, easy that is. What is the key to a freshman having that and you guys kind of 
you know, cultivating that and then to be patient with the process? Well, it starts probably before they get here, Jeremy. I think it's, I think it's character. I think it's, 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 you know, open lines of communication. Um, I don't, we don't, we don't shy away in the, in the recruiting process of, of telling guys the word development program. You know, we've got a great strength coach. We've got, uh, you know, we look at Io DeSumo and he's a three-year guy um, and added 30 pounds and, you know, mid-range game and go through everything else. And it's every player uh, right on down the list. And, and uh, so we don't shy away from, from, from that. Um, no matter what they're being told since they're 14, that they're a one and done and they're a pro, uh, you still have to get them to understand that, that, you know, that we talk a ton about family and we talk a ton about winning and winning's really hard. And, um, you know, most kids have won, but they, it, it's come easy for them because, you know, they play in high school where it's an extracurricular sport. Now it's a business. And, and it's, it's challenging and it's against the best players in the country. And it's against people that can be 45 years older than you. And um, they don't recognize that until they actually get here. But I think, you know, communicating with them, teaching them how to work, teaching them how to deal with adversity. Um, everyone, everyone goes through adversity and, you know, you can either let it be one piano on your back or two pianos on your back, whatever, and keep letting it weigh it down. But if you don't get learned to deal with that, um, you know, you're probably never going to make it here or anywhere else. But uh, so we talk about it all the time and, and, you know, you can't make excuses. You can't keep score. You've just got to, you've just got to be you. And, and so we, we open those lines of communication and, you know, Good and and I live by saying good things happen to those who work hard. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Coach, I wanted to ask you about Io a double double last night. Another one, specifically with his success this year. How much do you use that as a conversation in recruiting for guys that want to have the type of success he had at Illinois and then want to be that guy in the NBA? How much do you find yourself talking about Io? I hope I don't look that dumb, Derek. That I wouldn't use that. Maybe I do. I mean, you probably ask my wife, she might tell you that I am. Yeah. I mean, who, 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 I mean, he's a, he's a, he's an unbelievable resource piece to talk about because he, 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 he listened. He was, he's not afraid to listen. You know, I'm watching the game last night and Alex Caruso in the middle of the game is coaching him up on a, on a, you know, a play that was being questioned, wasn't a foul and he's coaching him up and I was sitting there just staring him right in the face. It wasn't, you know, screw this or this or this. I know what I'm, you know, no, that kid's just, and, and he's such an example of how to do it right. And, and not, and understand he doesn't have all the answers and understand he doesn't know anything and deal with adversity. And, you know, Thing I respect more than anything about Io DeSumo is the big picture for him. Never the, the moment, the game, the play never gets in the way of the big picture. And for him, the big picture is winning. And it and it's 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 it doesn't matter what the situation he's he's so focused on winning and how how to win and and how to be you know. And, and that process is, is incredible. So, yeah, I, Derek, long answer to a great question. I, yeah, I, we'd be foolish not to show his remarkable growth in his career. And, you know, all we got to do is pull up a film in Maui when he's got every part of his body covered because he was so skinny and frail and it was an embarrassment to show off his body anyway. But, He's, he was afraid to get hit, you know, and now 30, 35 pounds later, you know, here he is, um, you know, cut up and strong. And I mean, that's development, that's work. And, and we'd be, we'd be crazy not to try to sell that. I figured. Thanks.